Hi, I'm Bob Hasegawa, your state senator for the 11th Legislative District, back with another weekly update from Olympia. And we're just post cutoff right now. House of Origin cutoff is that point midway through our legislative session where all bills that are being introduced either in the Senate or the House have to be passed by those bodies. Otherwise, they die. Uh, of course, in Olympia, anything can sprout legs and crawl out from under rocks at, at any given time. But at this point in time, for the most part, bills that have not been passed by their House of Origin are pretty much dead. Uh, that being said, on Monday, uh, this coming Monday, we're having a hearing on one of my bills to introduce this concept uh, to the legislature, which the bill will still be alive uh, because the legislature is convened for a two-year period. So currently, we are the 63rd legislature of the state of Washington. So bills that are introduced this session will still be alive next session. So we're holding a hearing on uh, one of my bills which was brought to me by some of the uh, Muslim immigrants in our community, the 11th District. As you know, the 11th District is one of the most diverse districts in the United States. And in fact, the Tukwila School District was named by the New York Times as the number one most diverse district in the United States. So uh, it's a fascinating district to represent. And what this bill will do is actually address the needs, not just of the, our immigrant Muslim community or others that uh, practice the Muslim faith, but it also has drawn interest from the Jewish community and the Buddhist community and other religions who will stand to benefit from this bill, which actually allows um, people who are practicing their faith or for matters of conscience want to take a day off from work. Uh, this bill provides that state employees or students in the public schools will be allowed to take a day off, two days off actually, for, to, uh, for matters to practice their faith or conscience. And the reason this is important to the Muslim community who brought this to me is because um, they have two major holidays a year. Uh, they call them Eids. But the thing about the Muslim calendar is that it's only 355 days long as opposed to the Gregorian calendar that we're familiar with, which is 365 days. So because of that, the holiday changes from year to year. But another idiosyncrasy uh, is that the holiday really is not known which exact day it will fall on because according to their practice, a certified person, observers, have to see the crescent moon, which means that uh, the holiday specific day may not be identified until possibly the night before it happens. Uh, because if somebody doesn't see the moon at that particular point, the crescent moon, then the holiday can't be declared. So because of this and because of the, the nature of the changing days on a year-to-year -year basis, um, employers are reluctant to give their workers time off to practice their faith or students were being penalized because teachers would not reschedule tests, for instance, um, which then may, means that the kids won't do quite as well or it appears that they're not doing as well. So this bill requires uh, state employers to allow their employees and for schools to allow their students to take two days off a year to, uh, for matters of following their faith or conscience. So it's a very interesting issue actually and I've learned a lot about uh, the Muslim uh, religion through this process. But what it is also, uh, two other things. Number one, it shows respect for the multicultural nature of our district and our state. Uh, at large, but it also is an organizing tool and helps teach new Americans how our political process works. So by engaging them into this process and seeing firsthand how to get a bill passed, we're building better citizenship. So I'm very excited about this bill and look forward to it moving forward um, next session after we've had this introductory hearing this session. So uh, that's one of the things I'm working on. 
A um, couple other things of interest to you would be that uh, because we're post cut off and many of the bills died, uh, I'm very grateful actually that many of the bills that were on the floor calendar at the time of the cutoff did actually die because some of those were pretty onerous. There were attacks on middle class working families and um, thankfully um, I don't think that there were enough votes to be able to assemble in time to get them off the Senate floor. Unfortunately though many bad bills did make it off the Senate floor. Uh, things that um, attack workers compensation for instance which is one of those insurance policies, state insurance policies that would, was agreed to years and years ago between both business and the workers uh, and actually at the time that the, our workers comp system was created it was a concession to the businesses who wanted the workers comp because at the time businesses were being held up to huge uh, court judgments and penalties for negligence and that sort of thing and the employers couldn't tolerate that. So they wanted to create this socialized insurance system called workers' compensation labor, managed by the Department of Labor and Industries to make sure that they were insulated from um, liability. And so they are insulated by li from liability but in return workers de deserve sure compensation if they're injured on the job and that's the deal. Now every legislature were fighting back bills to bang away at that social compact that was achieved decades ago uh, and this session they were actually able to pass some more uh, bills that chipped away at the workers comp. Another of the issue areas that we were dealing with was um, education. So in education, uh, it was very interesting to me to watch most of the bills being pushed by the Republican majority in the Senate. Because when you read the bill reports and you see who lined up in favor of these bills and who were opposed, you could see that all of the educational professionals, the teachers, the principals, the school directors, people who, have, who are professionals in education were opposing these bills. Who was lined up in favor of it? It was the corporate um, lobbyists. Uh, Stanford Children, which if you look into the, um, Stanford Children is a national organization and um, their board members, national board members consist of, consist of folks like um, the chairman of the board of Bain Capital. Uh, their whole goal is to try and find ways to make it easier to privatize our education system, which is to me totally unconscionable. So. Um, a lot of these education bills went out of here. Uh, hopefully the House will have the good sense to um, fix those bills or kill them. Uh, but at this phase of the legislative session now we're moving into the budget discussions. So that's where the rubber meets the road with what we're trying to do here in Olympia. Uh, education is going to be our number one priority and especially with the thankfully for the McCleary decision is going to force us to deal with that. Unfortunately though the budget projections are looking pretty dire, the revenue projections. So you know after um, five years now of nothing but cutting budgets since the uh, recession has started there really is no room to trim any more out of the state budget we are going to have to find ways to raise revenue and Governor Inslee is going to be coming up with a proposal. He uh, is, it's speculated that he will be asking for about a billion dollars through cutting corporate tax loopholes. Uh, the Supreme Court just gave us a good decision that uh, said that we don't now need the two-thirds to eliminate the corporate tax loopholes. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, look at some of those and I'm not opposed to all tax incentives by any stretch because some of them actually do incentivize economic development. But we need to look at each tax incentive individually and if they're not returning a net benefit to the state of Washington, we need to eliminate them because they're just a giveaway to the corporations at that point. I think that there's enough of those that we can raise significant money so that we can address our McCleary obligation. But part of what the mistake 
that the legislature makes when looking at education is they look at it as this little silo of interest. It's time in the seats in the classrooms is how many oversimplify education. To me, education is much broader. It's a systemic issue because if the child shows up to school but they were homeless, is that child ready to learn and can that child learn in the classroom once that child gets there? There are 27,000 homeless children, students, in our public schools in this state. That's an unconscionable number. We have to do something about that. And those children are not ready to learn. So that is part of making sure that basic education is being addressed. Had the child had a good breakfast and lunch and dinner, these are all making sure that uh, if we have to make sure that the child's systemic support, social support system is there so that they can learn once they get into the classroom. So anyway, um, it's a very complicated question. We will be tackling that in the weeks ahead, but, uh, and I'll be telling you more about it back then. So uh, at this point, I just want to say thanks for your support. Thanks for listening. If you want to find out more about how you can be involved or weigh in on some of these issues, um, you can contact me at my email address, legislative email address, which you'll be seeing at the bottom of your screen. So for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again next time.